Episode 12, Our Favorite Shows. Welcome to the Visionary Variety Podcast, where we cover cool stuff like photo, video, film, books, and technology. So switch on your brain and enjoy the show. Thank you guys for joining us in another episode of the Visionary Variety Podcast. Last week was super fun. We had my brother on the show. We're talking about all kinds of geeky stuff from loss in space to artificial intelligence. Nate, wasn't that a fun episode? Definitely. It was definitely fun having your brother in addition to the podcast. So if you guys haven't listened to it, go check it out. It was definitely uh, it was a juicy conversation. It sounds kind of weird, but it was definitely in depth. Juicy. Mm-hmm. What did I miss? I use that word all the time. Juicy. <laughs> oh. totally normal uh, that was a fun episode yeah we, we especially in the last chunk where we talk about artificial intelligence we got super deep and it was i love that stuff i like yeah. i like saying what if and projecting and speaking of projections my predictions for lost in space were totally wrong <laughs> I, <laughs> I have currently to this date of recording i have watched four episodes of lost in space and pretty much all my predictions were uh, fell flat well some of them most of them <laughs> So wait, you're saying you're wrong on April 16th, 2018? <laughs> wow. I can be wrong? What is this? Yeah, you know, not always right. <laughs> so anyway, we really appreciate you guys listening to the podcast and downloading and sharing our posts. Uh, but something that I have not mentioned, we are 12 episodes in on our show, and I have never once mentioned ratings or reviews. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I'm new to this podcast thing. We're still learning, especially if you're on iTunes. I think iTunes is a really big platform for ratings and reviews. Um, drop a drop a rating. I think it's a star rating and a review. Let us know what you think about the show. Give us, uh, you know, we hope it's a five-star rating, but we would really appreciate some ratings on whatever service you use to kind of bump up our exposure in that platform. And, you know, just uh, give us a good fuzzy feeling on our chest when we look at the reviews. Let us know that you guys are, are liking what we're putting out. <laughs> and uh, I, I can see the numbers. I can see the numbers, guys. I know you're listening. Just uh, we're not really hearing much, much back from you guys yet. So let us know. You can also reach us at any time at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we love to hear from our fans. So talk to us, okay? But before we get started, Angela, you went to a convention recently, didn't you? I did, yes. And I uh, visited C2E2 in Chicago. And it was my first time taking a trip to Chicago as well. And it was super cool. Like, I've never been to a convention that size before. It's uh, held in Chicago's, uh, I guess it's its main convention center. And the place is just massive. And there's just so many people there. It's really warranted to have such a big space. Never awesome. at one point did it feel like I was ever like swimming through a sea of people. So I'm very oh, thankful that's good. for that. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. when that point hits at the conventions that I go to, I leave. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. not going to be pushing through people. I can't get photos anywhere. It's just not fun. C2E2 sounds like a droid from Star Wars. <laughs> Does it not? <laughs> right. I thought that too. <laughs> that's the new robot in episode nine. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember exactly what it stands for. For It was like Chicago, Chicago it, Convention Entertainment? Entertainment Expo or Entertainment. Yeah. I forget exactly. It stands for something. I don't know. Well, the, the one we have... The one we have here in San Antonio is the tongue twister. It's Alamo City Comic Con, but when you abbreviate it, it's A C C C. There's a lot of C's. Oh my! Wow. Yeah. Called A C three. H A triple C. Yeah, everything looks like a chemical <laughs> compound now. We just start <laughs> numbering things. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. And did you do yeah. anything cool in Chicago while you were there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Actually, I have a cousin who lives right outside of Chicago, about an hour and a half, and she met us. Uh, one of the days and she took us a little tour around uh like the southern part of downtown and Ooh. we got to see the bean which was my <laughs> goal to see and for those who don't know its actual name is called cloud gates but from what i've heard i've never heard anyone actually call it cloud gate it's just the bean <laughs> and it's a giant mirrored bean in like the middle of this park ish area i guess and you can just go up to it you can go underneath it and there's a lot of different like mirrors and stuff to where when you look up, it looks like you're in the middle of a giant kaleidoscope, which is super trippy and cool. Mm-hmm. Trippy. Yeah. But it was built like around 2006. So a lot of people hmm. I've talked to have never seemed to have heard of it. But yeah, super I've cool. I've seen it all over the place. I thought it was older than that. That's really cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I could I could have swore I thought it was like made in the 90s. Yeah. But, Mm-mm. you know, I learned something new. I know, right? And also while I was there, I got to have some of the famous Chicago deep dish pizza. Hey. Which Oh my gosh. It's so good, but it is like the densest pizza I've ever had in my life. One slice will fill you up completely. That's enough calories for your whole week. 
<laughs> Probably. I don't even want to know <laughs> the amount of calories in a single slice. I have not I have not traveled for a convention yet, but it's coming up. When I have a good enough excuse or One day. Have enough, make enough money off of it, I will definitely travel. All right. So what have you been up to, Daniel? Not a whole lot. I've been pretty busy with doing a lot of mini photo shoots, like for families and blue bonnets and you know things like that. I did a headshot photo shoot last night. So nothing particularly nerdy, but still fun and uh, enjoying that. Um, I have cool. something that is nerdy though, as I have been modeling a space station, uh, on my laptop recently and it is looking really good. Um, that's nice. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know what got me in the mood for spaceships recently, but I, I did a bunch of real rough, uh, 3d shape sketches of just some different like designs for spaceships. And I, mm-hmm. I posted them. I said, Hey, on Facebook, I said, what, which ones do you want to see me like model in detail and make yeah. look legit? And I had a bunch of people commenting and voting on them. And so I picked one, I actually picked two models and I blended them together. And uh, oh, it's wow. looking it's looking really cool, actually. I'm really proud. Uh, I'm learning a lot, too. It's kind of a learning experiment, really. And my end goal is I'm going to make a nice, like, a maybe two-minute um, video of, like, different animated uh, shot angles and, you know, mm-hmm. motion and stuff like that. So it'll be really cool. That'd be and, super uh, neat. Yeah, your 3D work always amazes me because I can't <laughs> even begin to fathom, like, how do you do this stuff? Like, it should take forever, but I'm sure it does. it's streamlined the process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's a fun learning process. You know, you start with basic shapes and you build upwards and zoom in more and add more and more detail. But uh, mm-hmm. you can see that spaceship if you go to my uh, 3D art or my digital art Facebook page, and that's called New Vision. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash New Vision FX, uh, you'll see that. That's the letters FX. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can geek out about that. Um, other stuff, talking about space, I uh, started watching the Lost in Space show last weekend. Or <clears throat> uh, Speaking of space, I've also started watching the Lost in Space TV show on Netflix over the weekend, and it's pretty good. It's really well made. Uh, I've got some issues with the story writing and you know some cliches and kind of cinematic tropes that you see in a lot of family-friendly shows, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, it's still enjoyable and entertaining. It's also family-friendly, so if you got kids, you know, maybe six years old and up, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, good for them. I don't know. It's, it's fine to watch with them. Yeah. So uh, it's cool. So we might do an episode of that in the future uh, once we've watched more of the show, maybe finish the first series, but we'll see about that. Nate, what's going on with you lately? One second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Sorry, that was special. <laughs> Oh you need to get some like lemon juice or something that clears up your throat. I don't know what Gone does. Juice. I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to start making like gallon juice. <laughs> no, I was I was coughing, so I stepped away from the mic. For, I heard everything you just said, but oh. um, <laughs> well, guys, guys, in just a few weeks, the Infinity War is coming out. Mm. Finally, we're getting yeah, what we yes. want. Man, I hope it's. Uh, I don't know. I hope they answer all the questions we all have. I really, really, really hope it's not part one of two. Um, but <laughs> I do. And then, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yes, okay. I know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have mixed. I have mixed feelings about it. And then, after we, you know, get the nice taste of infinite, like the Infinity War, next month in May, we get the Solo a Star Wars story, and I'm like, I don't know how good it's going to be, but I'm liking the visuals and kind of seeing where Han Solo comes from, even though the iconic Harrison Ford's not playing the role, unfortunately. <laughs> You know, it, it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. But <laughs> that's a given. I'm looking forward. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the actual storyline mm-hmm. of where they're going with this. That's actually fun. There's two Wookies in one. There are um, two. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. I saw that. So they're fighting on the. There's really no spoilers for. I mean, if you haven't seen the trailer, I'm so sorry if I'm ruining this. But <laughs> they're fighting on a. Well, it looks like a space train. Oh yeah, that yeah. Which is. <laughs> And then, you know, I see Chewbacca, and then there's another mm-hmm. Wookiee, and they, like, they hug and butt heads. Oh, they're friends, okay. So I was like, oh! And then, but then, for those that are into this kind of stuff, which I don't know, I have mixed feelings about, they have the Meg with uh, Jason <laughs> Statham and a really big shark. Oh, no. And Mm-mm. some say it's Jaws, and some say it's Sharknado. <laughs> and I say I may not see this movie until it goes to, like, to the $2 movie theater. I don't know. I'm not mixed seeing feelings. So I saw the trailer. It was a, uh, it was definitely a thriller, just like Jaws was. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. So I'm, I probably need to see another trailer, or some more comments, reviews, and all that fun stuff. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to the Infinite War solo and the Meg. 
So and that's, I'm really looking forward to those upcoming movies. If you like Jaws as well as Child Endangerment, uh, The Meg oh looks like God. a great movie for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out oh there. Oh, gosh. Already know I'm passing on that one. I can't do shark <laughs> movies. I could barely handle Jaws. <laughs> because they're cheesy or because they terrify you? Because they terrify me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Deep Blue Sea was pretty terrifying. I a... I'm not seeing that one either. <laughs> the, the, the black guy dies first. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. That's the same. <laughs> That's true. That. <laughs> oh my gosh. All righty. So, main topic of this episode is our favorite TV shows, right? So, I guess I'm going to go ahead and start off my list. I'm going to start off with Monk. It's, it's an oldie <laughs> but a goodie it for good. me. Yeah, it's kind of like the lower functioning version of Sherlock. I guess <laughs> that's the way I can describe wow. it. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, Monk, he is a uh, private detective. And he has a very major case of OCD. Yeah. Like so major to where he can barely function on the job. Mm, so great. Basically every single episode consists of him. It's basically him can't evening over. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like he's at a crime scene and he's just like fidgeting over like <laughs> all the smallest things being out of place. The, or, the couch color being wrong. Right. <laughs> Something silly. Or even when he tries to like write a letter to someone, he spends <laughs> like 20 minutes just writing the first letter trying to get it absolutely perfect. Like every single wow. episode will make you cringe in some way. And yet I love it for some reason. Fun. I don't know why. Uh, I love detective shows, so yeah. I th that's like a big reason why I love the show so much. And it's just so quirky. I I've seen the first like episode and the last episode. <laughs> don't, wow. ask, don't ask me how. You're one of you. those people. Huh? I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> if I was maybe at the hospital and a surgery and it was on, I was like, oh my god, or I. I purposefully like sought it out. I'm like, I'm just gonna spoil it and watch the last episode. I don't remember, but I watched oh it. Oh my gosh. It was good. Good series. <laughs> From start to finish. It was a good uh, series. <laughs> right. I think the whole wow. I know it's on Amazon. I don't know if the whole series is on there, but uh, I saw that recently and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to watch some more of it. Yeah. Well, one of my favorites is Arrow. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. I've watched a season and a few episodes into the second season. The Robin Hood Batman. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much, yeah. Rich boy, lots of money, cool toys, learns martial arts on the island. That's yeah. what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. Was <laughs> Comes back and saves the city. Yeah, it's very, very mm -hmm. similar. Exactly. Um, yeah, the Arrow, it's not for everyone, uh, but my wife and I really enjoyed it. It's like The Flash, but not because it's dark and gritty and people like die and like, get their butts kicked really bad. And there's just, like a lot of darkness. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> Oliver Queen is, is Arrow. Spoiler. Uh, he... What? Yeah, what? No. <laughs> he lives in uh, Star City and or Starling City, and uh, I think five or six hundred miles away is Central City, where the Flash lives. And um, um, basically, Arrow City of Starling City is basically like uh, Gotham. <laughs> it's really, yeah. really a lot like Gotham. Yeah, it's a fun show. There's uh, a lot of cool sci-fi elements, some fun characters. They they later on in the show they do bring in a lot of cameos of different heroes and you know sub heroes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They kind of have a team built up of you know like. Avengers type people, and mm. um, it's cool. I, I, good action, good good choreographing too. Have they ever done a crossover with Arrow and Batman just so they can like duke it out to see who's the best billionaire? That would be awesome. Boy? No, I don't think they'd <laughs> even mention him. Sadly. That would be cool. That would be so funny. Who would win? Always Batman. Batman always wins. It better be Batman. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the same question: Captain America or Black Panther? Who would win? They both have super serum, basically. <laughs> Similar. Yeah. They both have vibranium. <laughs> <laughs> On mine, I think it's going to be Parks and Recs. Now, a lot of people compare apples to oranges about The Office, but there's a lot of big names in there, and it's actually funny. And this Parks and Recs came after, you know, way after The Office. Even, I think there was a overseas version in The Office came in the United States, mm -hmm. and then Parks and Recs started, like, way after. <laughs> But a lot of big names came out of that, and so it's pretty cool. A lot of the yeah. awkward moments, like when someone says something stupid, they all look at the camera. They're like, what? <laughs> they got that and going. So it's it's funny. Great. It's so weird to see Chris Pratt in that because that was before Guardians and stuff. Yeah, so I, like I started watching that stuff before he was even a really. Like, I mean, he's been in movies before, but like before he became like even a bigger, bigger deal. I mean, like. You know, we're talking about Chris Pratt. We're talking about there's a few comedians in there. And it was like, man, there's a lot of people in here that are now bigger names because mm -hmm. of the show. Yeah. Kind of cool to see kind of like this humor, fun kind of back and forth. And I I haven't finished it completely because, of uh, you know, wonderful Netflix didn't let me, you know, get the last couple seasons just yet. But, 
you know, it's kind of funny to see a lot of these people go back and forth and then now to see their careers. Now it's kind of like the office. Like there's a lot mm-hmm. of big people that are doing big things. Yeah. So I'll use Chris Pratt for one, you know, he's this Andy Dwyer. He's kind of, he was only <laughs> supposed to be in a few like episodes and then they're like, I really like your humor. You're really funny. We're going to keep you on until like the yeah. very last season. And because of something like that, you know, he got, you know, his Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic <laughs> World. Mm-hmm. He became a Lego. He became a cowboy. <laughs> he got in shape. And <laughs> yeah. And then watching it now, it's like, wow, you know, there's a lot of big names that came out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, my next show, uh, kind of bouncing off the arrow, is The Flash. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Ooh. You never saw that coming. Uh, it's it's a fun show. It's Like I said, it's totally the opposite of Arrow in that it's like, bright and happy and positive and the family actually is like functional not dysfunctional like arrows and what? yeah they stay together and they like help each other and learn <laughs> that's unheard of for a superhero anything <laughs> right yeah i mean he's, he's got a good at father least in figure. His case. well his dad's in prison although he was framed yeah I was at least he's not yeah. dead yeah he's not dead <laughs> his mother is dead though oh i won't get into somebody that. had well, to be dead of course there, there's some spoilers <laughs> in there but yeah unfortunately the outcome is his dad's the only person left. Mm-hmm. But did anybody else get like kind of sad that they didn't use the Netflix Flash in the actual Justice League movie? I saw that coming. I know they don't do that kind of stuff. That's just too good for the fans. I know, but it would have been nice. Yeah, it like, would have been cool. I, I, personally, like that Barry Allen on he's Netflix great. was, he's awesome. Yeah, he's really and, but, good. I think that's what the show is so popular because people are just fall in love with him. He's just so kind and funny and yeah. genuine. Like mm-hmm. he's a really good actor for what he's doing in the show. And that's probably why it's so bit popular. But um, yeah, the positivity of the show is nice. The effects are great. Yeah. I love the lightning they do. Yeah. He runs. Um, there's a, there's a good amount of special effects in the show. And it's actually quite decent for, for a Netflix show. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of cool sci-fi elements in there, you know, concerning time travel and speed and, you know, there's a lot of pseudoscience and techno babble. Yeah. But uh, it, it's it's good story devices to to progress the story, and yeah. um, I like the show. It's fun. All right, I guess I'm going to follow up on the superhero trend here. I'm yeah. going to say mine. My next one is going to be Jessica Jones. Ooh, I know. <laughs> I really got into the first season a lot. I haven't seen the second one yet, so I hope it's just as good as the first. But she's a she's a fun antihero. I like her. Yeah, antiheroes are always fun for me. But yeah. I think what really made Jessica Jones for me was David Tennant as Kilgrave, the villain. <laughs> he's just so different. And he's, he's awesome. like the villain that you love to hate. Mm-hmm. Like, not that, you know, you hate his existence. And you're just like, oh, man, he's just so stupid. But you just go ahead and die already. No, he's, <laughs> you just hate how bad he is. Like, this terrible villain he <laughs> is. But you want him to stick around because it's just like he's so... Great. Yeah. Like David Tennant's acting is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what makes him stand out more um than like the traditional villain? He doesn't like have any like su- superpowers that make him super strong or anything. He's like a manipulator. Like everything he says, people just automatically like do. Like he'll give a command and people just automatically just are brainwashed by him mm-hmm. and they do whatever the he says. Out. And that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. He's this big char- charismatic kind mm-hmm. of villain. Which he doctor is he in Doctor Who? He is the 10th Doctor, yeah, who okay. is also my favorite Doctor in the show. But, and it's just so weird to see him also in this role, <laughs> because it's just a complete, just completely well, you different. you know what? He was an arrow. He was a villain in Arrow. Was he really? I didn't yeah. even know that. Oh, my gosh. I try to remember what his deal was. I think Wait. he was a drug dealer. He got this, like, secret drug serum off the street, and it would, like, mess with people and make them crazy or something. I don't know. It's so trippy. I I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, but he did it so well. Like, what are you doing telling people to kill themselves and stuff like that? This is awful. <laughs> but I, I had to keep watching though when I started <laughs> it. And I'm like, I have to know what happens next. I don't think so, because I think you find out early on. Okay. Well, go ahead and break it open. What what does he do? I mean, I mean, I basically said already is he just he manipulates people. He just tells people what to do, and they automatically do it. So he can never get away. He can um, he can get away with just about anything. Yeah, but is it psychic? Is it superhuman? Is it medi- uh, um? I think he was experimented on, if I remember correctly. It's like, like yes, a bunch of mental experiments. I can't remember if he was born with some sort of gift, and they kind of unlocked it further by experimentation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think I think it's just some sort of. S- psychic ability he has no control over it whatsoever oh interesting so, 
Well, this is yeah. Marvel, so he could it's be a scary. mutant, technically. <laughs> Ten, I guess. But not yet. <laughs> not somewhat, but not really. Yeah. I don't know. The cool. whole X-Men mutant crap is so confusing. I know. I so dumb. All right, awesome. Uh, Nate, what do you got next? I got a TV show. Uh, I hope so. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no way. My next one. Okay, now it's kind of stepping away from the superhero villain comic book. It's called Shooter. They made... Actually, it's from a movie that Mark Wahlberg was in. It was really good. And there's a lot, actually a lot of big names in that one too, the actual movie. But they went ahead and I think Mark Wahlberg helped with this TV show. Now, I think they're only a couple of seasons in and it was really, really good. It was a breath of fresh air to see actors I didn't know. Like, I didn't know who some of these actors were mm-hmm. like at all. But it was a really good storyline. So it was nice. kind of one of those, it's a super cast that you've never seen before with a really great story. So you're like, get hooked That's on cool. and then you want to watch and watch and watch. And you're like, Oh man, give me more, give me more. Yeah. And you know, I think we're maybe a couple seasons in, so it's not all the way through, but it was definitely a different pace of, you know, getting out of the Marvel detective kind of stuff. Now it's kind of military mm-hmm. kind of frame and it was really good. And I was like, wow, like they did a really good job taking a two hour movie and now they're making a TV show. And I guess, you know, for a lot of the viewers, Moving forward, they're going to be doing that with Lost in Space. So I'm really looking forward to a lot of these movies that are becoming TV yeah, shows. Yeah, for, for some, not all stories, but for some stories, it really works because there's so much to expand yeah. upon. And you're not stretching yeah. things out. There's enough material there to make a TV show, which I, I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. Like Sometimes when I read a sci-fi book, I'm like, man, this will make a killer series. But sometimes I'm like, oh, no, this just needs to be a one-off movie and one and done. Interesting. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Cool. And now in the shooter, is it about um, like government sanctioned snipers, kind of like the born identity kind of setup, or is it something else? Yeah, kind of. So he's an ex military that retires and he wants nothing to do with like government stuff. He's kind of just living up in the mountains. Um, basically, for those that saw the movies, basically the same storyline. Yeah, he's living off the grid. A lot of detail. Mm-hmm. Basically, the government comes in and says, We need you to assassinate somebody. I won't give any spoilers, but um, they basically beg and plead with him going back and forth, back and forth. And he finally does it. It ends up being a frame. And now he's on the run. And in the movie, they have two hours to show that he's on the run. But in the, like the TV show, he's going city to city, identity to identity, mm-hmm. and really, really having to like lay low under cops. Like, I mean, even like in the smallest, smallest towns, cops are starting to get word and yeah. recognition and stuff. So he really has to even live off the grid then too. So cool. Awesome. Well, my next show is a very much a science fiction. It is called Ascension. And it's kind of strange. It's a mini series. So there's only three episodes, mm-hmm. but each episode I think is like an hour and a half long, maybe or one or two hours long. They're long, <laughs> uh, oh, but man. they're really cool. So without spoiling it, the setup for the show is it takes place, um, I think, in the current day or maybe the 80s. So it's a generation yep. ship uh, with I forgot how many, maybe uh, one or 200 people, uh, a good amount. And the cool thing is that it's all retro. And also, this spaceship <laughs> launched in the 50s. Bum, bum, bum. So, yeah, top secret, I think, under Nixon, he, he made this generation thing to beat the space race and to save humanity in case there's a nuclear, you know, all-out war. Um, we need to yeah. find a new planet just in case we are complete idiots and destroy everything we have. So huh. they launched this ship in the 50s. And uh, so it's fun because the technology on the ship is not your typical sci-fi stuff. It looks different. It's got this retro twist on it. It's not completely, it's not a Mary Sue technology that just does everything. Yeah. There's no holograms. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see old school screens, you see big dials. So it's kind of fun. It's, it's a nice look. And you, you start to wonder, like, we went to the moon. Like, could we go farther <laughs> if we, you know, given the propulsion limitation, could we make a deep space spaceship in, with retro technology? So it's fun. And uh, yeah. lots of good drama. Uh, it's got an actress from um, Battlestar Galactica who played number six, which I really like her. She's she's beautiful and terrifying. <laughs> So she's cool on there. It's just a lot of good, a lot of good uh, mystery and things being revealed and lies. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Alrighty. So I guess for my next show, um, I admittedly I haven't seen this one all the way through, but I'm close. I've, yes. I've been watching Breaking Bad. Yeah. And that one's a little bit intense. Show is so popular. <laughs> but, okay, for those who don't know, the premise of Breaking Bad. I feel like you should know the premise of Breaking Bad. Just how popular it is. <laughs> Everyone but just in knows. case. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So this uh, high school chemistry teacher, he develops uh, lung cancer, and his family has no way in order to pay for his treatments. So in order to supply his family with money for after he passes, he starts making uh, meth. 
<laughs> Don't we all? And he, since he's a <laughs> chemistry teacher, he is able to make like like the purest form of meth like out on the market. Period. <laughs> so wow. yeah, he needs to say he becomes very popular out on the streets and stuff. But he also it t- attracts like the attention of the cartel and all this stuff. It just goes crazy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just think the whole premise is interesting. I mean, first, I mean, just like to see how this character transforms like morally. Because at first, you know, he starts out with good intentions, even though he's, you know, doing something completely terrible in order to <laughs> leave his family in a good situation after he passes. Yeah. But he just ends up becoming like this total monster, gets greedy and stuff like that. And, you know, has to get involved with the drug lords and all that fun stuff. That's always Murders fun. People. Yeah. <laughs> but the, like the writing is just top notch. The acting is great. It, like I can't even think like where I've watched like an episode and thought, man, this episode such a drag or this, it stays consistently good mm, as far nice. as I can tell. Yeah. Without so, wearing you out. Exactly. We've got good writers. We need, mm-hmm. we need to find out who writes that show and what's the other shows that they write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. I haven't finished it yet, so I'm hoping it's, the series ends well. I mean, from what I've heard, I don't recall anybody saying that the series ended badly. Yeah. So. They, they didn't pull a lost, did they? No. From <laughs> what I can tell, no. I feel like I would have heard about that if it was true. So my next show is Person of Interest. That's now, a good one. Uh, yeah, it's actually that. really, really good. Huh. They take this, so there's this really smart guy. I don't want to give anything away, but I've seen it all the way through, at least what there's provided on Netflix. I don't know if we're all the way through. And so he's really smart. He builds a supercomputer, and he somehow stumbles across where the computer is taking, like, algorithm math and figuring out the next solution. And he actually gets, I think, a phone call or something like that that warns him that something's going to happen. And he actually goes to the scene and where the computer suggests he should go because something tragic was about to happen. And he sees it, but he can't really do anything about it. And he tries, I think, don't hold me to that, I think he tries to interfere. <clears throat> I think he tries to intervene in the situation, but um, he ends up finding somebody that's an ex-military and retired and all that fun stuff. But it's re- it's really like wow, yeah. Just it, bring the like reality. It's like somebody could actually do this. Mm-hmm. Those those know? two actors that play the the two guys are, are great together. I love their chemistry. They're they so are. different. Yeah. yeah, they are. There's always mysteries on both sides. You kind of get little bits of their story. They just really work. They work really good together. That show will make you pleasantly paranoid for a while. <laughs> yeah. When you see a camera, when you see, you hear about facial tracking, you're just like, Derek, is there an AI behind this? What's going on here? Stop looking at yeah. me. <laughs> um, so we're talking about good characters in uh, Person of Interest. Well, my next favorite show is Lost. You guys, Were you guys also <laughs> highly addicted to Lost or did you just hate it? I did what I you did lost. with Monk, and I watched like the first episode, and then I watched <laughs> the like last? the recap of the whole no. series, and what? then I watched the last episode. How can you do that? That is not work with Lost. I didn't want to waste any time with. It. Oh my gosh! Well, my parents are super into that show with a KY, and I would hear like all the recaps from them like afterwards. And I feel like I watched the show, even though I didn't. Uh, so then I no. just. <laughs> I, I I beg of you, watch it uh, in, on your own sometime. <sighs> Yeah, see, Monk, it's a serial show, mostly, and I don't uh-huh. know. I think I can get away with it. It's it's awful, awful etiquette to do what I did, but that does not work with the lot with Lost. <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> you did? Okay, well, you know, okay. <laughs> so I, I love Lost. Uh, it's almost my number two show, but um, there's other shows I like more for different reasons. But Lost was so fun because it was just this great, I mean, plane crash, first episode. People are, you don't know who these people are. Why are they here? Mm-hmm. What the heck is this crazy, mysterious island? And I mean, as the show rolls on, there's more and more questions. And don't expect them to get answered because they probably won't. Or there'll be another questions that come up. I I had a friend that started watching a show a few years ago, and he literally had a notepad. He wrote down questions as he watched each episode. And I just laughed at him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's cute. You you got got 24 questions. I heard about those people. (laughs) You got 24 questions for the first episode. How cute. Don't expect those to get answered. Uh, But regardless of that uh, issue that maybe some people hate and some people might like that uh, aspect of a TV show, I love that show. Very cool. They even brought in some Mm -hmm. science fiction-y elements, a lot of myth. Um, They created a really cool mythos that kind of spanned a lot of time. Um, they go back to the set, uh, the 60, 60s and 70s, and you know I like when things go retro sometimes and go back to the present. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, kind of like Ascension, and so that was really cool. Uh, I, I just nice. love Lost, and I just man, I don't know why they haven't made a prequel because there's so much good juicy stuff in the past 
uh, that really sets up the lost world, um, lost world. <laughs> Uh, but they need to make they need to make a seventies a sixties or seventies prequel that would just be awesome um, and yeah. you know a lot of people just hate on the show because of the ending you can still enjoy the show if even if you don't like how it ended <laughs> I guess my show oh man I guess I'll go ahead and say Sherlock because I was super into that when mm-hmm. I st- uh, I didn't start watching it like as they were coming out I, when I started watching it like the third season was already out and I just binge watched from. Uh, once I started, because I'm a major Sherlock fan. I've read yeah. all the novels and all the shor- short stories. I think cool. Sherlock Holmes is, I think I would say he's my favorite character in all of fiction. Mm-hmm. Just because I, don't, I like his snarkiness. I like just it's fun his intelligence. It's, and I love the show when they show like how he figures things out. Yes. And they show his mind palace and all the images going in and out of his <laughs> brains and keywords and stuff. Oh, I really weird. love the, how they did the graphics in that show. It's so creative. I got to say something interesting. I want to see if you knew this. So uh, I learned this recently. Mm-hmm. Sherlock Holmes, the character, was written by uh, an author, and re- he left the character open to be written about by other authors. He didn't claim like ownership in the sense that no, you can't write about my character or you have to pay yeah. rights. It's totally it's weird. It's like an uncopywritten character. So yeah, I feel like I've heard of that before, and that, that it's really unique. Just boggles my mind. And yeah. the, the original author, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, but he wrote a novel, obviously with uh, Sherlock Holmes at least one novel, mm-hmm. to start it off. And he didn't really think that it would take off. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He didn't yeah. think it would be a success. So yeah. he didn't really do much with it and really claim much rights to it or whatever. Whatever he did, he allowed it to be uh, mm-hmm. taken by their authors and they ran with it. And another interesting yeah. thing about uh, Sherlock Holmes is that in, in, in general, maybe you can say specific cases where I'm wrong, but in general, Sherlock Holmes is a character that never really grows or just not a lot of happens in his life. He goes through his stuff and mm-hmm. he, he fixes things, but he doesn't like – you know, go on to get married and, you know, go through yeah. like phases of life. He's just kind of where he yeah. is. For the most part, he really likes his routine. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Fits, but I think at one point, I think he does. Yeah. I think he does try to retire at one point, like owns oh. like a beekeeping farm or something oh my gosh. like that. I don't know. I can't remember <laughs> exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not a whole lot of di- uh, character development. I think maybe yeah. he's kind of opens up to like Watson and stuff gradually mm-hmm. over time yeah. a little bit. But yeah. other than oh, and also with uh, the character of Irene Adler, mm. she's like mentioned in the show, but in the books, I mean, she's completely different. She's oh. not a weird dominatrix in the books. <laughs> Sorry to say for people, but it's like he's the only woman that's like ever caught his eye before, huh. made him stop and think because she's the only person. I don't know if it's the only person, but definitely the only woman who's ever outsmarted him. Oh, nice. She's only appeared in like one story in the books, as far as I can recall. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. But by and large, he's he's a very static character as far as his life mm-hmm. and yeah. his fictional before and after life. Uh, but you'd think yeah. that would make uh, him fail, but it's weird. It's guys kind of actually worked for him, and it, it's been a huge success. Uh, for yeah, decades. that's probably why he can't change his personality because just how he is works for his business. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, kind of. I actually got a little bit annoyed by that show. I think I watched about three or four episodes straight, or not straight, but you know, mm. within a short yeah. amount of time. And as much as I loved it, and it was so well made, so well acted, and the visuals were beautiful, I almost got a little. Uh, Mm. Uh, exhausted by how smart he is. Like, he figures everything yeah. out. I'm like, dude, can you fail? Like, can you just not <laughs> be right? Can Watson nope. be totally right and you be totally wrong? That would be great. Never. It gets better as seasons go on. You I'm get sure. what you want, what you just said. Oh, I good. will admit, though, that the the last season that they made, season four, I believe, uh, I was kind of disappointed where the writing took there. It just huh. got way too crazy. Oh, really? And they gave, they gave him, like, a sister. I'm like, who the heck is this? Uh-huh. I didn't even watch the last episode of that season. Just they're really trying. Yeah, they're trying to be a little too different. I'm kind of worried about the yeah. future of this, the show now. But um, My next show is kind of total, like, you know, that's Detective Smart, and this is not Detective Smart at all. It's uh, called Rules of Engagement. Oh, no. And I'll just I'll just put it this way. There's no smartness because there's <laughs> Patrick Wahlberg in there that's, and David Spade. I've so seen, I've uh, seen yeah. the show. It's something so, special. And that's the only reason I really watch the show is for those two actors is, you know, Patrick and David. <laughs> and the humor that goes back and forth. I mean, like, there's other actors in there that are real funny and they bounce off. And it's kind of like a Friends kind of episode, but not it, it's kind of more humor they only had seven uh seasons and then they called it quits and it went from 2007 to 2013 but there was a lot of big names in there and like I, i'm sounding like i'm re- you know broken record but it was really enjoyable just watching these guys episode to episode season to season just kind of grow and bounce off each other and be funny back and forth mm-hmm. and a lot of ongoing jokes from like earlier episodes and seasons that like made it almost to like the very last season I like humor, and I, I mean, I'm always, you know, 
Who likes humor? I'm, all, I'm, I'm always an action. I'm not really into laughing much. Yeah, I don't like funny stuff. <laughs> I'm always into the whole action shoot of my bang bang. Mm. Yeah. Marvel, DC, superhero, spy, doesn't really matter. But, you know, when it comes to sitcoms and stuff, I probably would prefer more comedy than drama. So, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it in a nutshell is just roles and engagement and just really because there was really two big actors that I wanted to see. <laughs> David Spade is special. I like him. I love Patrick Warburton. He's yeah. amazing in everything he does to me. <laughs> and in one of the episodes he goes, he's sick and he covers up and he he's like, I brought your blanket for you. Just they had made a quilt out of all his college shirts and high school shirts because like he was a jockey. And she made a quilt for him, and he's like not feeling good. And he's like, "I brought your blanket." And he's like, "Yippee!" And uh, it was hilarious. And like ever since then, I was like, anytime I do something fun, I say that. And people are like, wow. <laughs> "No one gets it." It's one of those things that are just so great to you, and no one, no one gets it. I hate that. He's, he's just like mm. yippee, and uh, it just was weird hearing Patrick kind of do the. Ee! And I was like, "Whoa!" It's so funny because he has a very distinguished voice. You know, yeah. he does something funny. There's always something hilarious if you're hearing a deep voice man and say something completely goofy. Well, my my show isn't so much funny. Uh, it's Daredevil. <laughs> oh, that's, an, that's good, the though. opposite of funny. Yes, it's an awesome butt kicking, just dirty, beautiful story. Uh, I really like that show. I I was hooked on it. I, mean, I couldn't wait to watch the next episode, mm-hmm. and uh, probably watch about three or four at a time. <laughs> it was so good. It's really good. Yeah. Um. The the way that they you know just his acting. The guy that acts. Uh, what's his name? Charlie Cox. Yeah, Charlie Cox is a great actor. He he just mm-hmm. is a perfect fit. Um, this is a funny story I read about uh, that in between uh, shooting of some of his episodes, he actually did get mugged in an alley in New York. What? <laughs> yeah, Daredevil got mugged. He did. Oh and I think gosh. he played it safe. I think he just gave him whatever. He didn't fight them or anything. But man, how oh, awesome would that lame. have been if he just kicked their butts? I know that was so cool. <laughs> I'm I'm sure they came close. Yeah, because that guy. I mean, his training he had to do for that show is so intensive. Yeah, he's ripped. But besides that, his martial arts skills are very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I was so impressed. The cinematography in the show is also great. There's a lot of good colors, uh, amazing locations. Uh, there's beautiful angles. There's some really cool camera tricks that they do. Like in season one, there's the the famous hallway fight scene, which is a continuous. Oh yes, I love that. Scene. Yeah, it's fun to watch. It's a it's a solid three minutes of fighting through a hallway. There's no camera changes. Uh, mm-hmm. Great camera work, also great fighting work, and it's just fun to yeah. see the, the realism. What happens yeah. if you fight straight for three minutes? It's not right. It's not what you see on most movies where they do camera cuts. When it's one solid yeah. camera cut, you get tired. And, uh, I it's, know. It's just awesome to see him just kick butt. I felt exhausted just watching that scene. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the burn. <laughs> cramp, <laughs> cramp. Um, <laughs> and then in the season two, there's uh, another continuous fight scene. There. I think that Nate did notice one cut. I think maybe earlier in there somewhere, but in the stairwell, yeah. I think there's two. They a couple pans. Oh, I didn't get to watch all the way through, but I saw a couple. Yeah, that's the stairwell fight. If you looked it up on YouTube, you, you watch and be amazed. It's super fun. So love Daredevil. Big fan. All right, I guess next on my list, uh, I'm gonna throw out an anime in here. I'm gonna be super what? geeky here. I know. What are those? Those like Japanese cartoon things. You know? <laughs> But I've recently gotten into a newer show called My Hero Academia, and it's like, I want to say it's like anime's version of X-Men, sort of, in this like Mm. futuristic version of Earth. 80% of the population is born with what they call a quirk, which is basically a superpower. And it can be anything from, you know, like super strength to something as weird as like dispensing tape out of your elbows. Yeah, Whoa. it gets <laughs> it can get a little weird, but like the whole plot of the show is there's this kid named Midoriya, and he's not born with a quirk. He's one of the unfortunate twenty percent. He's been like super enthusiastic of like being this awesome superhero when he grows up, and then he <laughs> eventually learns that yeah, he's not gonna be anything. Aww. He's not born with a quirk. So one day he happens upon the number one hero in the world, who's called All Might. Oh gosh, and he ends up like basically trailing him one day and he finds out uh he's like a super buff guy when he's out in the public oh, fighting man. crime and all that but he can only hold that form for so long so in like real <laughs> life he's like this really lanky uh, v- very awful looking person it almost looks like he's home homeless <laughs> that's great so, yeah so he finds out that um this character all might 
he actually he was born without a quirk as well. He just inherited like this other quirk from someone else, and this huh. quirk is called all for one. So basically, it's like a j- passing on sort of thing, and you gain uh-huh. the powers of those who's held it before. And this guy is also he's kind of like a he has he his lifespan isn't going to go on much longer basically <laughs> he got Aww. injured in a battle his organs are all messed up he coughs up blood occasionally he can only hold his like super strong form for so long now so after he happens upon this kid and finds out you know he's got a really good heart and has like a true hero sense about him he lets him inherit his power <laughs> and they do that by swallowing a little bit of dna from the person who mm, holds tasty. the power so he he swallows a hair <laughs> oh, <gross. laughs> which is weird so he has all this power now bursting inside of him, and when it, <laughs> he cannot contain this power yet, like anytime he tries to let loose like a little bit of it, he ends up like breaking his arm. <laughs> oh my gosh! And stuff. So <laughs> yeah, for the first like season and a half, he ends up just trying to even just use like five percent of this power, not mm-hmm. like shatter his body like every time he uses it. That's so awesome. it's got like a slow start to it. Yeah. He he's like a crybaby and stuff for the first few episodes. So it's like when you're watching you're like, oh my God, will this kid shut up, stop crying and stuff. It gets all emotional. Then he ends up becoming like a real hero and fights mm-hmm. actual bad guys. That's, that's fun and, to see someone become the hero and learn to uh, control or learn a new ability like that. That's cool. Oh yeah. And especially since he ends up going to like, they have like a high school for all uh, potential heroes oh, nice. and stuff and they learn how to use their powers and they try to try like get the t- attention of agencies who will recruit them and stuff like that it's like a big <laughs> business funny. like the he- hero business is like a legit business That's in this awesome. world where they get yeah where they <laughs> get paid it. and all that stuff <laughs> uh, get a contract funny. yeah like exactly sports. that's cool mm. so my next show is called the house of cards it's a netflix original and at first Netflix original, and at first I watched it, and I was like, what is this? Like, is it a magician movie? I don't know what this is, House of Cards. A lot of, like, <laughs> I've seen, like, a lot of, like, card posters. I was like, oh. Maybe it's about gambling. You know, card games, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Kevin Spacey's the main role. And I was like, okay, this us be good. This is going to be fun. And then I'm like, okay, well, this is not what I thought. It's politician, politics, <laughs> you know, everything to do with DC. And I'm like, okay, like, where's the magic? Not DC and, Comics. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> no, not at all. But then, you know, I watched a couple episodes in. They're, they're about an hour long, so it's a lot of information in each episode. Mm-hmm. And so as you go forward, it's actually quite scary in some ways that one person, you know, can have such an effect on, you know, positions. And it just slowly builds up to he's, Kevin Spacey's role is just taking out, like, minor stuff and getting people in office that he would prefer because yeah. he got scorned and he didn't get a position in – DC, so he's just slowly manipulating and working his way up ever so slowly. And it's, I'm like, okay, I can't, I don't know if I can watch much more of this because it's getting too real. And they only made five seasons, and I don't think he was able to finish out the fourth and fifth season hmm. due to uh, something he got charged for oh, no. in his personal oh, life. No. So they were like, but goodbye. Dude. But um, <laughs> so, like, definitely the seasons that he wasn't there, I really didn't keep up with. But it was, it's really good. There's a lot of big names, even names. I don't even know their actual name. And, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's, is that Netflix like first original? I think it was. Yeah. House of Cards is the very first original show for Netflix in 2013. They got a lot now. So long ago. Yeah. It's kind of scary. It's kind of manipulating. It's kind of, you know, just like real life. It's, that's (laughs) why I stopped watching. (laughs) And (laughs) because it was getting like, Something would happen in reality, and then at nighttime I go watch this TV show. I'm like, okay, why am I watching reality in a highlight? I didn't need, I don't need to watch this anymore. I can't, I can't. Oh yeah. So for me to watch this, this was kind of out of the norm for me, especially since, like I just said, I'm not really into politicians and mm. all that drama. Who so, is? But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love the people politics. that are in DCR. Hey, some people do. Well, my next show uh, is uh, the 100. Ooh. I've heard of it, but I have not seen any episodes of it yet. It is cool. I really, my wife and I love it. Um, it's going pretty strong, and each series has a lot of cool reveals and uh, some really good story writing in it. It starts off rough, so if, if you, listener, if you start watching this and you, you start thinking the first episode, oh my gosh, this is another lame teenage uh, love triangle <laughs> drama show with sci-fi thrown in, well, you're wrong, because after a few episodes, it finally gets out of that groove of the teenage love drama thing, which is super lame. 
Um, and it starts to really explore some super big and, and cool sci-fi uh, ideas, which are really great. Um, so yeah, this show is definitely worth a watch. Great effects, great uh, sets, locations, uh, costumes, uh, character building is good. And uh, I just really like the world that they build. It is a post-apocalyptic world where after 100 years, Ooh. roughly 100 years of nuclear fallout, you know, affecting Earth, making it unhabitable, um, the humans that did uh, survive by being in orbit and a, a sustaining a spaceship for almost 100 years, they are now like, okay, well, we're, it's, it's almost 100 year mark. Earth is about to be safe, so we're going to send down some people to go check it out. Well, who do they send down? They send down the prisoners, which are young people that have, you know, committed various crimes <laughs> and done bad stuff. Um, so they're like, well, if you die, hey, we get more oxygen, and you know, you did bad stuff anyway. You're a criminal. So we're going to send you down as a guinea pig to see if Earth is is livable. And mm -hmm. um, all kinds of wow. stuff after stuff happens. It's just great. Oh boy. Yeah, it's fun. Huh. Sounds interesting. That's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely add that to my list of stuff. Yeah, it sounds should. interesting. Yeah, there's, there's everything from spaceships to uh, tribal warfare. There's artificial intelligence, uh, you know, nuclear, previous war stuff that happened that you don't, you're kind of trying to figure out. Uh, people living in bunkers. This is a lot of fun stuff. Mm. So it's basically like the Hunger Games. I'm striking. Um, yeah. Is it, a, is it, a, is it, a, are the seasons already finished or is it still an ongoing I, TV show? I don't know if it's, it might be finished. It's been a while since I've heard of anything new from it. Uh, we watched season four. I thought that was the last season, but I. Not 100% sure right now. It's been a while since we watched it. Alrighty, I guess up next for me, it's yet another oldie but a goodie, and it will always treasure it in my heart forever. It's The <laughs> Office. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I love The Office. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the later seasons, they weren't as good. But, I mean, I love the ending of the show, at least. I don't know. It's just watching these characters go about their day-to-day -day lives in the office being so tracked great. down by this production company Hardcore. for some reason. Yeah, right. I don't know why. why anybody would make a documentary about a paper company. <laughs> That's honestly, part of the but, comedy, you know. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Mm -hmm. Just everybody's characters are just so entertaining for me. Of course, you got Steve Carell's character, Michael Scott, and how he's uh. Basically the worst boss ever, but he tries so hard <laughs> to be liked by everyone, even though he makes these sexist comments and racist jokes and he doesn't mean anything by it, but he just sounds terrible and he's completely inept at his job. He doesn't really like to do any actual real work. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I had to put that. I had to put oh that gosh. in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then you got Dwight. I love Dwight. <laughs> he's like the best character in the show, honestly. He's like the ultimate well, nerd in the office. He takes everything way too seriously. He uh -huh. wants to be he wants to be an actual assistant manager, but he's assistant to the regional manager instead and not. Well, and he, he has manager. katanas and various weapons hidden throughout the mm -hmm. office. <laughs> yeah. I love it. For, yeah. for the Halloween episodes, he's he's dressed up as Battlestar Galactica characters and people from StarCraft <laughs> yeah, in yeah. these ridiculous costumes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was it was actually funny when I was watching The Office quite frequently. I was watching Galaxy Quest, and I think I pointed it out to Angelo that we were. Um, he's one of the aliens. I don't know what oh, they yeah. speak, or, and yeah. he's just standing in the background, and he just has like this cheesy like grin. I was like, "Is that the white?" I know that <laughs> blew my mind. I had to go look. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that is That's the hilarious. White. What the heck is he doing in Galaxy Quest? <laughs> well, because like I love his humor in The Office, and it's just so. Spon like it's so random and I like, know, he doesn't even have day. any lines he's just like an extra <laughs> back yeah, there much. like celebrating i'm like oh my god what is <laughs> that blew my he, mind he's definitely he's definitely like the older brother and like when you know the boss leaves he's like all right i'm in charge yeah and, like, oh. and he just all of a sudden basically it creates a dictatorship in the office pretty much yeah oh my gosh it just never gets old there's i still laugh at like the same episodes like the classic one yeah. where the they have like a fire alarm drill, and then he, like, Dwight, actually, like actually sets a fire inside the office in a trash can, <laughs> and then everybody panics. And then one of the office workers who has a cat, she throws her cat up into the ceiling for him to escape. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Awesome. It makes me laugh every time. But who is the killer? Oh yeah, the Scranton Strangler. People think people think it's Toby, <laughs> but I could believe it. Yeah, no, uh, poor Toby. I oh, know Toby. Poor gets, guy crapped on all the time he's so nice he doesn't do anything I know. the last two seasons weren't that great but they had a really great ending 
that just like tugs at your heartstrings. So mm-hmm. I'm glad it had the ending it deserved. And apparently they're bringing it back somehow. Like they're bringing, Uh-oh. yeah, they're. <laughs> And I wouldn't say it's a reboot, but they're continuing on The Office. They're bringing some of the original cast back. Of course, they're not bringing back Steve Carell. And I don't know who else isn't a part of it anymore, but... Parks and Rec survived mm-hmm. because of The Office. And, you know, people like Chris Pratt came out of Parks and Rec. And John, I don't know how to say his last name. The guy plays Krasinski, Jim. Krasinski, I think. Krasinski. Yeah, so he had a lot of good movies recently, like 13 Hours, The Quiet Place. And now and Amazon picked him up, and he's going to be playing Jack Ryan, which is oh, a yeah. whole other story. And so it's kind of funny to see, like, this office guy just becoming, like, this iconic I know. Hero. It's so weird, even Dwyer now. becoming, like... Andy Dwyer becoming like Star Lord, yeah. Jurassic World, a Lego cowboy. You know, <laughs> Lego, the most important <laughs> so thing. It's, it's, it, well, hello, are you a Lego? Do you have <laughs> one? Like, that's a big thing in some working worlds. On it. <laughs> so, I'm working on becoming yeah. a Lego. <laughs> that's a life goal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's current. So now we're going to step back, like way back. So growing up, my parents, at least my mom, watched a lot of the TV show called Friends. And I always oh, saw no. like hit and misses from here and there, here and there. And I'm like, what is this? And I never understood. And I remember it would come on and she'd be cooking and watching. And then, like, we never finished a whole episode or we finished an episode or one and a half. And so finally, Netflix picked it up and they loaded all 10 seasons. So I watched all 236 episodes twice. Oh my, oh God. my gosh. You nerd. I don't want to spoil too much, but I guess at the ending, they all kind of have made their paths and their ways and they're all going to be friends, but they're. Ah, uh, friends, Wait. puns. Um, um, anyways, so they're basically just parting ways from that part of their life, Aww. but they haven't stopped being friends. Mm-hmm. They became real adults. <laughs> I know. <Yes>. Like, <laughs> I, my next show uh, is similar to Friends because it's called Fringe. Oh, huh? my gosh. Huh? See? Oh. See what I did there? Wow. I like what you did there. That was, that was terrible. That was smooth. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was something. It was something. So Fringe, I love the show. We watch this incessantly on DVD because we got free DVDs from the library, which is awesome. And uh, we didn't have streaming service at the time. This was a few years ago. And we watched the whole series in like like a month or something. It was just, it was great. It's kind of, part of me wants to say it's the new X-Files, but it's very different than X-Files. It's not so much secret society government cover-up stuff, but it's like alternate world pseudoscience, you know, fringe, fringe science is, is where that comes from. Uh, so weird stuff like alternate real, not alternate, alternate world stuff coming into our world. Uh, you know, weird uh, anomalies of science and and the main character is trying to figure out what's going on. And there's there's things that endanger you know our world that are coming from a different world. So uh, it was just a great show, uh, really fun, great adventure, and it just you know goes all kinds of interesting places as the show progresses. And I was totally hooked to that show. My next show, I feel so dorky saying this, but I. Uh, I've been really into Dragon Ball Super lately, so yeah. I've got to throw it in there. I've gr- I, maybe I should just make this like Dragon Ball as a whole, this whole part, because I've grown up with Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. I watched mm-hmm. it pretty religiously as a kid. Me it got too. me into art a lot. I, I feel ashamed for not having Dragon Ball Z on my list right now. I just I was just thinking like like real uh, I don't know I was thinking real world TV shows and Dragon Ball Z should be on my list. So you got it. <laughs> yeah, we can both talk about it now. Yeah. It's good. Definitely watch it every time it came on Tsunami, like in the afternoon and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's so cheesy when you look back on it now. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure <laughs> sort of thing now because yeah. well, back then it was it was cool because there wasn't really a show like that back then. I started yeah. recently getting into Dragon Ball Super because they have the dub now released online. And I was kind of worried at first when I started watching it, thinking, oh, man, now that I'm an adult, am I going to watch this show and just be like, oh, this is the <laughs> cheesiest thing I've ever yeah. seen. But I ended up binge watching like the 52 episodes that they released uh, in like 10 days. And I, wow. I know. I oh, don't binge man. watch stuff. I don't like doing that, but I just kept wanting to watch it and watch it. I felt like a crazy. kid again. I know. It's good. Because it's like, yeah, and it's actually like like way better written than like Dragon Ball Z was back in the day. Like the mm-hmm. dubbers got better at their jaw. The voice actors are better. It's good. I mean, sadly, like the first couple of arcs in the in the series, it kind of recaps like the latest two movies that came out because the mm-hmm. movies are canon and they wanted to put that into the series and yeah, stuff. Yeah, title together. Exp- right? Yeah, exactly. But once they get past that, I mean, it's definitely like entertaining. Like the arcs they came up with, the villains—they're not just so like, "Ooh, I want to destroy the earth." Yeah. Duh, 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 all <laughs> that, because. like all the other ones were. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the villains are more entertaining. Like one of my favorite characters. is guy called Beerus and he's like a god of destruction he's the most powerful being in the universe not even like Goku and everybody else can beat him and he, he's 
like you can set him off and like for the stupidest stuff and he'll destroy a planet like instantly <laughs> oh, if he wants. No. But he really likes he keeps Earth intact because he likes all the food that they have. He's a big glutton <laughs> and he, <laughs> he loves hilarious. keeping track of like all of his favorite foods. I'm I didn't like, know this that. guy speaks to me. I like this guy. And his That's voice fun. actor is great. Oh, cool. He does a good job playing him. <laughs> uh, just there's so many new characters that I really like in that show. And there's some like legitimately like funny moments in that show that made me burst out laughing. And it's just like in the filler episodes where there's not like anything major going on. It's just like a silly little side story. And the voice actors had some fun. And like I know there's one part where they threw in like a blooper or something. And uh, it's just very enjoyable. Oh, cool. I like it. But when mm-hmm. dra- when animes are translated into English, the namings of these shows, let me tell you, they are just <laughs> ridiculous. This is a nicely named yeah. show. Other shows like yeah. Fruits, Fruits Basket. It's an anime. Yeah. Fruits yeah, yeah. Basket. Uh, I don't even know why. <laughs> Sorry. There's one called Bleach. That's the name of one of the shows. Yeah. Like, why is it called Bleach? Uh, maybe it's probably a character's name, which is a stupid character name. But. I don't th- think it is because I've heard a lot about that show, even though I never watched it. And they never mention anything called Bleach in the show. It's a cleaning detergent, also an anime. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> That's a good one. So, changing gears, the next. TV show I have is called Burn Notice with mm-hmm. Jeffrey Donovan and Bruce Campbell. And they'll, and I don't know who most of these actors were. The only guy I knew was Bruce Campbell About the uh, because he was, he was in, I, I guess he killed zombies before he was in this TV show. He killed like, the undead. So this TV show basically is a spy that gets burned and he doesn't know why. Like he was on a mission and just all of a sudden that he gets a call and he says, you've been blacklisted. And he's like, what? And basically every organization and everybody's after him. So he's on the run and basically has to go undercover and he ends up in Miami, builds friends and Bruce Campbell, his name is Sam X actually is an old contact buddy that they were in war together. They knew each other. So they actually grouped together in Miami and they somehow weirdly, he, as he's trying to figure out why he gets burned, he basically becomes a detective as well. And he slowly works his way through many like drug dealers and, <laughs> the cartel and I'm talking like high level agencies and everything. And he, he plays like, I don't know if you all have ever seen the saint, but he plays mm-hmm. a lot of roles where, you know, he changes his personality, his look, mm-hmm. his voice, his characteristics just to get through. And like, he is trained in all different types of fighting styles. He knows, aren't they always, you know, you can't have a spy and him not be able to fight. Is he a Mary Sue? No, he has some flaws. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but okay. Like, and maybe like some of the training he has, it's Mary Sue, but yeah. you know, at the beginning, but they actually go back and they show some of his older days, kind of like an arrow, mm-hmm. but it's quite funny. There's a lot of humor as well on top of kind of like your James Bond, Mission Impossible. And so it was definitely something I enjoyed watching. Yeah, I mean, Netflix has it now, but I was watching it like when it was live on cable. And then actually for a couple birthday presents, I actually got the full series uh-huh. on DVD. And so I would just, during the summertime, I would sit and watch, you know, the whole series. And Daniel, what is your all-time favorite or best TV show that you have on your list? It is Battlestar Galactica. How did I know? Ooh. It's awesome. I love Battlestar Galactica. And, I, and this one came out in 2004, I believe. I love this show because it is a space science fiction, which, you know, you guys, see, oh, everybody knows by now. I love space. I love sci-fi. Yeah. Uh, that's a no-brainer. What? But uh, it's not just another space shooter and <laughs> alien show. Um, in fact, there there mm-hmm. are no aliens, but surprise. Wow. There is an artificial intelligence that has gone bad. It's basically the servant robots have, uh, you know, they're sentient, but they've gotten so sentient now that they have rebelled and uh, left humanity because they're being, you know, overused and overworked. And then they come back yeah. and they <laughs> try to wipe us all out. Uh, it, it is awesome. But on top of those uh, interesting themes, there is a lot of religion in the show. Um, there's a lot mm-hmm. of uh, different takes on God. Uh, well, maybe two main takes. There are two different views. And, you know, I like that. Most Mostly when religion comes into science fiction, it's always like the trope of the bad guy is a religious nut. He thinks he's a messiah, thinks he's a prophet, mm-hmm. and he does bad stuff in the name of religion. That's very, very over overstated in science fiction. Um, but that's not the same. Religion actually gets a pretty good take in this in this show. And even though the bad guys are doing bad stuff in the name of religion, they do discuss deeper concepts of God and what is and isn't God. Is this God's will? What is God's will? How do we know? And uh, I really I like that. I like the mm-hmm. the fresh take on religion. Uh, yeah. on poly- yeah. uh, I almost said polygamy on polytheism as well as monotheism. <laughs> and uh, you know they're surviving in space, and their technology is not perfect. 
they have to just barely scrape by and they have to, you know, figure out ways to survive. And there's a bunch of spaceships all in kind of a, in a grouping and they're jumping through space, trying to get away from the robots that are chasing them. Um, I mean, it's just so great. Uh, the suspense and the acting is great. The characters are gr- awesome. And the big reveal at the end is also really great. And I actually, for the record, I like the ending of the show. Uh, some people are like super against it, kind of like with Lost. But I thought it was pretty great. And I really enjoyed the show. I, it was one of those where I was just on the edge of my seat and I couldn't wait to watch the next episode. Uh, that's that's why it's my number one. So now, how about you, Angela? What's your number one Pop TV show. Oh, into the end. That's such a hard pick. I guess <laughs> no. I got to pick something. Oh man, something that's got production values all the way through. Something that almost every age can enjoy. Uh, I gotta say, the joy of painting with Bob Ross. <laughs> that's my number one. No, no, I'm just kidding. Although I do love oh, me some Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. Happy trees. I know. <laughs> Everybody has a friend in his world. It's oh, so pure. So nice. <laughs> but no. Anyway, <laughs> no, I don't know. I gotta say, maybe Stranger Things because yeah, I've, re- that's an easy I've really one. been. Yeah, I'm normally I'm not like full gung ho into get like watching a show once like the seasons are released. I can wait a little bit. I'll be fine. But like, mm-hmm. no, once these seasons have been released, I've been wanting to watch them straight <laughs> away and binge watch them. They they are so good because I am a big fan of like the old eighties Steven Spielberg movies mm-hmm. and I've. Like some of the Stephen King stuff too, so having like that show, which is just basically a big love letter to both, it's just ah, it makes me happy. <laughs> all the kids are great. I love their interactions with each other. Yeah, they're so cute. I love them all. Mm-hmm. All the adult characters are great too. It's just like everybody. It's just like a, all the whole cast is yeah, amazing in that phenomenal. show. The the mm-hmm. effects, the, the the setting and staging of everything is mm-hmm. really great. I heard a really interesting interview with uh, the woman who uh, was basically the location scouter for the show. And she's uh-huh. talking about these places that they found. This is for season two. Um, uh-huh. And I think these were in Atlanta. And so she has this really cool job where she gets to go out and find like abandoned buildings and historical places <laughs> and just, you know, middle of, middle of nowhere, interesting spots that fit their needs for the, you know, for that part of the script. Uh, yeah. I would love that job because I love location scouting for photography. It's super right. fun. And, yeah, um, but that's... not only did they just find these awesome places, but they had to restore these places to make them safe. So, oh yeah, I can imagine yeah. no random bouts of tetanus or anything. And man, the, the stuff that she talked about that they had to do and stuff they had to deal with was just like crazy. Like I think the, oh, really? um, the place where all the kids were locked in, um, that was in the show was fakely a power plant, but it turned out to be the government, you know, place out in the forest. Uh-huh. Uh, that place oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. was actually, I think it was an abandoned uh, mental asylum or power plant. It was one of the two, but that place was like mm. full of rats. There was uh, uh. tagging everywhere. There was electrical nightmare. And they even oh rigged gosh. for the high school scenes that are inside, shot inside the high school. They got mm-hmm. the yeah. exact same lighting that they used in the 80s. And they installed that in the entire my gosh. place. Everywhere you that they shot. think of that. Oh yeah. Another thing they did was for the one of the scenes where there's a bunch of security cameras uh, being visible on like a, an array of monitors. They mm-hmm. got old CRT screens that were used in the 80s <laughs> and they rigged them all up and they had to sync up the frame rate with the refresh rate of those TVs with the cameras. They did all mm-hmm. kinds of crazy stuff like the lighting, the authenticity of the equipment and everything that was used was like to the T. And that that's really yeah. it makes me enjoy it even more. Oh, yeah, totally. It blows my mind when you actually consider the amount of effort oh. that these movie makers or TV show makers do to try to replicate an, yeah. era, like an era of the past. You never think about like the lighting to get that accurate in the school. It just it blog- boggles my mind. That's a ton of work, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. All righty. So, Nate, what is your numero uno Better be good. favorite? Uh, <laughs> it's so good, I don't even have one. Um, no. Um, <laughs> Whoa. My number one that was really hard to choose and going back and forth was a white collar with Matthew Comedy Tour Bomber. Oh, that's blue collar comedy tour. <laughs> like, you put a comedy show as your number one. <laughs> and I mean, I wouldn't put past you, but... I know. I was about to say the exact same thing. Oh, man. Yeah, no. White collar is more like your Mission Impossible, your Oceans 11, 12, and 13. James Bond, kind of mixture detective, Sherlock mm. Holmes, mm. with a lot of humor. And basically the storyline is is Neil Caffrey, played by Matthew Bomber, I think is his name. I have, I'm so sorry if I'm saying his name wrong. Um, he's a criminal, and he's like the top-ranking like 
thief on, for the FBI. And so he's a forager. He's Ooh, a thief. Cool. He can do so much. He can do everything. They actually, basically, he's <laughs> never been caught. And this guy, his he's name is Mary Peter Burke, Sue. and he's played by Tim <laughs> Decay. And he basically goes through and finds him. And, you know, it's a good love story at first. And pretty much it's a detective, funny, comedy, fun love story. You know, the series went from 2009 to 2014. So it was a pretty wide span of, you know, fans that they grew over <laughs> a period of time. And so back and forth, there was a lot of humor and a lot of like sitting on the edge of your seat. And they, he's Peter Burke is an FBI agent and he's like, he is moving up the chain in FBI and he splits off and makes what's called the white collar division. And so when they capture him, Neil Caffrey, the thief, instead of going to jail, they make a deal that he has an anklet and he can only go so far without the protection of the FBI uh, and Peter Burke. So it's like, like a white hat hacker, but it's kind of different. Pretty much. Color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So he basically, Neil Caffrey has to help find, and so he has enemies and the FBI is going after some of his, like the enemy he has. And he's like, yeah. And then sometimes he has to betray a friend and it's, it's really good. Like whoever wrote that story, whoever sat down and plotted this whole thing, I was like, wow, like, you guys did really, <laughs> really good. Yeah. And I've, suggested it to many people like if you like that kind of stuff if you like oceans 11 12 13 mission impossible james bond detective humor romance kind of thing like that's something you want to sit down and watch because i don't know i just really enjoyed that kind of category of movie you know the movies i just listed off about this tv show or stuff i watch Mm -hmm. on a regular basis so it was definitely right at the alley and that's why i picked it to be my number one even though it was really really hard because there's so many other great tv shows that i watch and i'm just like uh i don't know which one but I'm going to go with white collar. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm surprised I've never really heard of it. It sounds like a show I would definitely enjoy. Cool. Well, this has been a fun, fun trip down memory lane, as well as trying to share stuff that you love and stuff that really stands out to you as a good show. If you guys like this as well, um, feel free to find any of our posts on our Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and comment and let us know what your maybe top 10 are, top 20, I don't care. Let us know what you love. And also what we said earlier, go on any podcast platform and make sure to leave us a good review and a comment. That'll help us get some more exposure and you know share our posts to get the word out there because we are still a new podcast, trying to reach some new uh, people and you know get the word out there about the show. Because we think we got some pretty cool stuff. And obviously, you've listened to the end, so you must be fans as well. So, you know, give us a little <laughs> yeah. favor. We're super excited for summer coming up. There's going to be a lot of great movies like Solo and Infinity Wars and a bunch of others that we're hoping to cover. So be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any of those. And, uh, you know, if you have any suggestions about topics or movies or shows or, you know, nerdy concepts, maybe that could be a good discussion that you would love to hear us cover in the podcast. You can uh, send us those ideas on social media or by email at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to get some input from you guys and uh, give you some content that you'd love. So, uh, again, you guys, thanks for listening and have a great week. We'll see you next time. The Merg, Nate? <laughs> Wait, is, is that what he says? Where? <laughs> oh. Merglodern. <The> Merg. <laughs> uh, can't wait to see Infernity Wears, Surler, and the Merglodern. <laughs> <laughs> the Mervers. I can't. Oh my gosh. You okay? You gonna make it? No.